I wasn't going to video this project because I was about to start another cedar forest project and I'd already pruned one of the trees and then John said to me people would love seeing it so why not let's do it so the first thing I do I pulled out seven trees whether I can use all of them I don't know yet but we're going to have trees of differing heights as far as possible so this one I've already pruned normally the trees that we grow we use either for making individual trees or growing in forest so this one uh, sometimes I change my mind and decide that I, it might make a better individual tree now <clears throat> because this one's got a kink there I might keep it as an individual tree so I'm not going to use this for making into a forest tree so let's bite the bullet cut that off it's coming out at the nice elbow position so this is going to end up as an ordinary tree not as part of the forest so we have to be prepared to change our mind I'm tempted to leave more of these in order to act as sacrificials. I might well do that. But even when I'm making individual tree, I've got to decide which branches to keep and which branches to discard. I don't like keeping too many plants, or too many branches, sorry, at one junction because you will get inverse taper so that's why I prune some of those off and then some of these will have to be wired down like that I will get Josh to wire some of these so you can see the end result so this is going to end up as an individual tree. So you can see the progress already. So that is not going to be used for my forest. Let's get that out of the way. Now let's find another straight one. Okay, so this is pretty straight. So with forest, we usually try to keep the trunk as straight as possible. Disposition of the branches evenly on either side. If you turn it around, you'll find that the disposition of branches does have a bearing on the final appearance of what you're trying to make. So I think this looks okay. Remember that with a forest you don't need too many branches low down. We start the branches quite high up. But as I always say, you got to know when to stop. If you go being trigger happy or secretary happy, you'll end up with no branches. But you don't try, you don't learn. See, I'm trying to leave alternate branches, like stepladder like that, going up here and lose this one. Then keep that one. And then there's another one there. Keep that one. So I'm going to make them into tall A-frame, A-shape. As you get towards the top, the branches come inwards. So this is as broad as it will be and then get shorter at the top. So that's the shape of each individual tree in the forest. I 
I do have to stop it at some point. These are cedar of Lebanon, Lebanese cedar. And I have quite a few customers who are from Lebanon. They love these plants. So I hope you get the idea to how I'm selecting the branches and then these will be wired down. These will be wired down. I will wire them before I put them together because once they are put in a pot, it won't be so easy to wire once they're assembled together. So that's number two. That's going to probably be the central tree. Okay, now this one is not as thick. So probably we we'll keep this slightly shorter. Tell me the height straight away. Deciding which branches to cut that for me is the most interesting and exciting part of the project. Once you've chosen the branches, the rest is easy work. So this one I can go there so I can take this one off. So you see how I'm climbing like that the ladder. One, two, three. Take that off. I can go up there. It's going to come here. I should be thinking aloud. I keep looking for alternate branches as I go up the tree, keeping the front clean. You see how the branches are being thinned? branches that are left are going to be wired. So that's the third one done. I think I probably would end up as a five tree group. This one's slightly shorter. must be wondering how I managed to decide as I go along. I think it's just by eye. If it's too congested, I take it off. That's the pausing. And then this will be wide. So that is number four. That's my skinny And number five, I'll probably use that one. Okay, now this is a short one I suppose so we will cut it down to here it's quite strange that all these trees are the same age but some are thicker than others it's like people some are tall some are short so trees behave in exactly the same way
guess you want me to talk more. I'm just concentrating. We've got, I think we will stick to five trees. One, two, three, four, five, because they're pretty big trees. We need to get in a pot. So the next thing to do is to wire them. So that's not too difficult. So I hope you enjoyed this process of choosing the branches to wire. And so that's the first thing. So I'm resuming filming of this cedar group that I started a week ago. They are pretty tall trees. They are about 1.2, 1.4 meter tall. As you can see, the height of those boards is about five foot high. So that tree is five foot high. So I've got three of them. I've teased the root ball because they're in quite large. I think these are like 10 or 12 liter pots. You can see the size of the root ball we're trying to tease out. So from that, we're going to reduce the root ball by half. Can you hold that up, Josh? Yes, you see, what a lot of the soil we have to get off. And because we are now into November, into the dormant season, it's quite safe to do it. And not only that, because we have the greenhouse facilities, whatever we do, we can protect the trees in here. So I'm lucky that I'm able to do it at this time of the year. Normally the best time to do it is in early spring, February, March, but because I have the greenhouse facilities, I don't have to wait that long. So I'm trying to get seven trees into that pot. It's a rectangular pot. It's only a training pot because the eventual pot will have to be a large circular pot, like a drum pot or an oval pot. So I've got four trees. I'll try and squeeze seven in, but it may be a tall order. If not, I'll put five in. So let's see how we go. Just to show you how severe we can be with the root ball. You see this root ball is pretty small compared to the pot it originally came out from. So we'll just show you the size of this root ball and we'll progress and get it down to about half that size, at least half that size. I'll try and get seven trees in that pot, but I won't force it. Just trying to get it in, all in one pot is not the object. The object should be to make it beautiful so that there should be space and perspective all combined into that composition. So I'm now about to pot these cedars up together. I was going to use seven, but I think seven is going to be a bit much. I haven't wired the branches, but I've thinned the branches out. So let me prepare the pot. As I said, this is only a temporary training pot. The final pot should be an oval or a round drum pot. So preparing the base, sometimes I don't cover each individual hole with one piece of mesh. This large pot has got two, three, five, seven holes. So I'm only going to put three pieces of mesh. Now I know that a lot of the so-called bonsai uh, people, masters or whatever you call them, will laugh at me for doing things like this. But I'm not bothered, I'm not uh, stressed by people criticizing me. But I do things in a practical way. Uh, it doesn't matter if they say that what, what Chan is doing is right or wrong, as long as it works. I'm always reminded in the 80s when I used to be a public servant, Mr. Thatcher met Deng Xiaoping in the 80s and her remark about Deng Xiaoping, that great, great man, I have the greatest admiration for Deng Xiaoping, and she said that she will always remember him for being a pragmatic person because Deng Xiaoping is supposed to have said, it doesn't matter if a cat is white or a cat is black. 
as long as it catches mice, that is all that matters. So same with these. As long as the thing works, why do we have to be bothered whether it is black or white or it's done this way or that way? So this is just a little anecdote about putting the mesh at the bottom. Now because I've taken so much of the root ball, I think I've taken 60 or 70 percent of the original root ball out. But because there are such a lot of lovely fibrous roots, I don't have to worry too much about it. Now because this is a bit low, I'm going to fill the pot with some compost. I'm going to show you what compost I'm going to use. If you follow me, this is the original compost that was used for potting up the cedars. It's very lovely compost. Again, I don't like to use the word peat, but it almost seems like peat. So I don't know what the base material is, but I would guess that it has a lot of uh, organic stuff, a lot of fine sand. So what I need to do is perhaps mix a little more uh, Akadama or the Japanese volcanic wood in that and use that as the base compost. So I'm going to do this. I'm a great believer in sustainability and recycling where I can. Now the trees have been growing so nicely in this soil, why do I have to throw it away? It is perfectly good soil. So I'm going to use the soil again. Just make sure it is clean. And because we are doing bonsai, putting drainage material, this is that volcanic grip. This is going to be very good stuff. I can also use Akadama, but because Akadama is such an ex expensive material, so things like this, I try not to use Akadama. Just to be frugal and not wasteful. Okay, let's take some of this soil. And if there are little bits of fine root, I don't have to sieve all that out because it's all organic stuff. The roots will rot and it will be beneficial for the trees. So I'm raising the surface because this is a deepish pot. And then I will see where we go from here. So the principal tree I think was this one. the correct height. I have put wires in there because I'm going to tie some of the trees in. Three. Four. Trying to find the other wire. Let's see if I can go to a tree. Oh, here we are. say when we do groups like this I think you need like four hands okay I'm putting some short ones at the back so that it gives perspective to make it appear that these trees are in the distance
Now it's a bit short and the central tree is not wired in but I will tie it together with the others. So I've arranged the trees like this so far but I want to see if I can improve it in some way. This side looks alright. If you look full frontal, this side looks alright. This tree and that tree, I might try and interchange to see if it makes a difference. Okay, let's watch the camera. Yeah. That's okay. I was putting the short tree at the back and I think having the taller one at the back might work better. I'm also trying to make it flare out a little bit. Just a little twist to one side or the other makes a big difference. So just bringing it closer makes a difference. I don't know whether that's better or not. A little bit. In. So I got away from putting the small trees at the back because now the big trees at the back, it still works. And of course these have to be all slightly wired. It won't remain like this. See this has been wired very nicely. Those have to be wired. I think we will leave it like that for the time being and see how we get on. So that's a five tree group. Stand next to it for size comparison, it's huge. <laughs> so the next thing would be to wire the branches. I will then decide which branches to keep and which to remove. For instance, this one I can see straight away is out of place. Some of them could be shortened, some can be wired down. So that's how we've left this one. So how easy it is, you know, making a group is just, as I say, like flower arranging, arranging five stems of flowers. So there you go, I'll fill the soil and then start doing the wiring. Okay. So we've got to this stage where we've potted the trees up and we are now going to wire the branches so that the branches hang downwards. There's a big difference between having the wires on the branches and not wiring them. See this 
tree is not wired yet, but when I wire it, you'll see the big difference. They make the tree look really old. So that's the next task to do. So all this has been done in less than one hour. I'm here again working on this cedar forest group which I started about four or five weeks ago and I return to it whenever I get a spare moment. So it is what we would call nearly 70% done. We've planted the trees in this large training pot and I have started wiring some of the branches. You can see what we've done with the branches here. They're all wired because we want the branches to hang downwards. And the reason why we want the branches to hang downwards is because we want to give the trees uh, an aged look. In nature, as trees get older and the weight of the branches uh, gets heavier, the branches hang downwards. Young branches have branches that spring upwards. Now, these cedar trees, you will see on this one, you see the branches here have not been wired yet. And because they've not been wired, they don't look quite right. See, these have been wired, so I'm trying to wire them all down. So I've got to complete these. And the one, the two trees at the back have also got to be wired. So this is what I'm going to do now. And I'll get someone to video it in a minute. You'll see that there will be quite a marked difference when it is wired. It gives it a more finished look. So when branches spring up, they don't look quite finished, but when they hang downwards, they would be quite nice. Those that are horizontal are okay. A lot of people would leave it as they are because this group is still under training, but I will try and complete it as far as I can so that you can see what the finished look uh, will appear like. I'm going to wire these two branches which have not been wired. So I'm going to go up the trunk Again, remembering to use the two-branch principle. The two-branch principle is almost non-negotiable. Get into the habit of always using the two-branch principle. So often I see people uh, not doing that and the tree looks a mess. So try and remember that. When you're new to bonsai, it's so easy to forget. You notice that I've taken the leader up because normally this would be a horizontal branch to give the apical look. Now these are not wired. Most of these branches are all of different sizes. These two which I've just wired are thin. Now these two are thicker. So I'm going to try to match the same thickness branches with the same grade of wire. Never try and wire a thin branch with a thick branch because if you do that, the wire won't be compatible and the results are not so pleasing. So this one I'm going to wire this one. And how long do we leave the wire on? Because these are relatively young trees. I think they need to stay on the branches for at least a year to have any effect. Now these two branches are slightly thinner so I'm going to go to a slightly thinner wire now. So I'm continuing to wire all these branches downwards. Always trying to match the appropriate thickness of branch with the wire. I'm using now one and a half mil and these slender branches, that one needs to be wired. Going up the trunk, if you come close, you'll see the direction of the wire. Because I'm going up the trunk from here to there, I'm going to follow the path of this wire so that it doesn't look a mess. You see the two wires almost hugging each other. So it looks neat. Do practice your wiring because the neater the wire looks, the tree will look more refined. If you have untidy wire, the tree looks a mess. 
Now these are thinner branches, so I'm going to wire these. So all the time I'm looking for the appropriate thickness of wire to use for the correct branches. Now if you come here, I don't know whether you can come that close, you can see that this branch is much thinner than this one. So what do I do? I can either wire the two nearest ones which look the same size and then I will deal with this. Let's deal with this first because this is thicker than the others. So let's see if I can use a thick branch to do that one. If it doesn't hold then I may have to use another piece of wire that means double it on this one. There you are, it does hold, so that's fine. Now this one is on its own, and there's nothing to link it to, so never panic. So if you have a three branch situation, you can still deal with it by wiring it to an existing piece of uh, branch that has not been wired. So you're using the two branch principle in a slightly different way. So because this is on its own, I can link it to that one. This is the nearest one. So again, you see the detail. I'm trying to wire this like a double, but I'm going to follow the path of the same wire. Can you see it's like that, hugging each other. Then it looks neat. Never crisscross. And that holds. And the wire ends you can cut off. You notice I do use my Ferco secateurs to cut wire because it's more convenient. You can use a wire cutter, but I prefer to use this. The Ferco is such a marvelous tool, it's so versatile. So now this tree has had all the branches wired. So these front three, three have been done. I've now got to work through these. So all these are going to be wired downwards. I'm not going to show you each and every piece of wiring because that could become a bit tiresome. Uh, one or two of the branches which are springing up too strongly I may get rid of. Also when you make a forest group, the low branches are not that important. So for instance this one, this is a bit low. I can get rid of that one. Now why did I leave a little stump? Now this one I can get rid of. I can leave a little stump. In case anyone wants to make a gin, you can use it for making gin with that. Whether you like it or not, we can leave it and see what it looks like. The gins only look right if they are appropriate to the design. Don't just make gin for the sake of making gin. So, Again, I look for similar thickness branches, so if you come close, you see these two branches are similar thickness and these two branches are of another thickness. So I will attempt to wire these two together. So this is really turning out to be a short lesson on how to do neat wiring rather than just making a group. So all these little tricks and tips do help in making the bonsai look more presentable and nice looking. I hope this holds. This is two and a half mil. I always say that knowing what size of wire to use comes with practice. favorite tool is the gin pliers and I use the gin pliers for terminating the wire. Okay, so that comes down like that, hangs down. You see, that's the look I want. Now these are different thickness, so I wire these together using a different thickness of wire. Maybe slightly thinner piece of wire. Make sure I have enough like that. Just check the length of wire you need. Not too long and not too short, so you don't waste and again, make sure you have enough to go to that end. 
and enough to go to this end, anchor it a little bit and then go on to that one to do it completely. Some of you may be asking, is it okay to wire in the winter? Because I'm now uh, on the 30th of November and we are really into winter. And winter you can keep wiring, especially with evergreen trees. It's a good time of the year to do it. And then all these we will continue to wire each and every one of them. So when I've done the two other trees, I will film again. So I've virtually wired almost everything. That side still got to be wired, but I've done this tree. This is the tree at the back. This one here, I've done this one. This has still got to be completed. So this tree is virtually all done. This has taken me like half an hour to do all these branches. And I can't decide whether to keep this as the leader or reduce the height a little bit. So let's look at it from the front. So if you look at this tree, this continues to go up. And although it is shorter than the principal tree, I still feel it's a bit too thick and too tall. And because this leader is rather thick, I could use one of the side branches to take up as the leader, like you do with any other bonsai that you make, you always got to decide on the leading shoot to get a better taper. So that is a better one. You see what I've done? And I can now take that up as the leader. So let me wire that up and then you'll see the effect. Just link it to an existing branch and then I take it upwards. So this can be taken up as the leader, so that's going to be the leader, and then this will be wired, just a tiny bit of wiring left to do, so that tree will be finished. So although making a group is just putting trees together, when you have to do the detail like wiring every single branch, that's what can take a lot of time, but it's worth it if you do it properly. And that is a bit too much that to make there. So this entire tree has been done. So I'm only now left to it. This one to do. So have a look. I've now wired virtually all the branches on this five tree cedar of Lebanon group. I've had to put it down on the ground here on another turntable because the trees were too high or too tall for me to work on. So that was a more comfortable height. So that is what it looks like. I will now get one of my colleagues to put it on the bench higher up and I'll take a final shot of the tree in just a second. So here we are. This is the group now. All the branches have been wired, hanging downwards, and this is what it looks like. I think the trees are, the tallest tree is about four foot tall, and for large gardens and large collections, this sort of group is quite acceptable, and before people shout and say that it's in the wrong pot this is only a training pot i like the roots to get well established in a deeper pot and maybe in a year or two's time i will take it out and put it in a shallow oval pot that is the final pot for this group i originally wanted to make it a seven tree group i might well do that but i found that being too close to each other the trees didn't look quite right so i gave more spacing i might yet do that as a variation because i don't want all the groups to look the same so there you are i hope you've enjoyed this video